middle age, Jeeves. Uh, not quite, sir. How did I fare? You are 35 over par, sir. Oh. The golf considerably below par. That's the ticket, Jeeves. Time for a sniffle, I think. <laughs> <coughs> You know, Jeeves, compared with some of those old-fashioned sherries, I've always thought the light, delicate quality of Croft Original a touch superior. <laughs> Rather like my golf, wouldn't you say? I would, indeed. <laughs> How many balls did we lose today, Jeeves? No, I don't think we were losing them, sir. I thought we were giving them away. <laughs> Croft Original Pale Cream Sherry. One instinctively knows when something is right. Think of all the times people eat in your home. Think. Wouldn't a hot-point dishwasher make life easier? Five programs, including two for added economy. The hot-point guarantee. And a lot more fun than being tied to the kitchen sink. Dishwash Electric with Hot Point. I've brought along something I believe you're rather partial to. Buxton Spring, Reverend. You're too kind. I do declare it takes 20 years of refinement through English limestone to produce a water of such purity. Aye, such she's talked up no, miss. Such clarity, such excellence. Oh, oh. What's up, beggar? Feeling a bit seasick? Buxton Spring for mad dogs and English persons. Sit down, John. Bit difficult, this. Um, sorry you couldn't work with the new guys. Me too. However, the settlement is quite generous. Agreed. And you'll keep the car, medical benefits and so on for another 12 months. Well, what are your plans? I'm going to start my own business. Oh. I'm getting some good advice. From? From the listening bank, who else? It's the Midlands Small Business Service. Credo. Credo? So now you're a born-again businessman. That's right. It's a good package. You work on a business plan, agree your financial needs, then you can get free banking, interest-free overdraft, all kinds of help. Put your chances of success way up. Great. When do you start? I've started. Move into my new offices next week. How long have you been planning this? Between you and me, Bob, I was going to do this anyway. But in the meantime, thanks for the check. Credo, the Midland Small Business Service from the Listening Bank. Now look what you've done. Hold on, I'll get him. There aren't any sharks in here, are they? No. Crocodiles ate all the sharks. Australians wouldn't give a Castle Main 4X for anything else. Now from ITN, the major international news story of the day, the successful end of the Superpower Summit in Washington. Mr. Gorbachev has set off for home and President Reagan has told Americans that the two leaders have made real progress. Well, here's ITN's Glenn O'Glaser with a roundup of the last few hours. Before leaving the United States, Mr. Gorbachev held a two-hour news conference at the Russian Embassy in Washington. The Soviet leader described his talks with President Reagan as intense and sometimes blunt, but he said he wanted the two superpowers to grow closer together. Americans are standing on the street. They, they, they wave their hands. And I said to them, look, that's what we're talking with the president about, how to come closer to each other, how to improve our cooperation. So go ahead and prod the uh, president towards that. Uh, our Soviet people are, so, are solidly prodding us towards that goal. From the Russian embassy, a cavalcade of 46 official cars drove to Andrews Air Force Base, and Mikhail and Raisa Gorbachev boarded the plane to take them to East Berlin, where the Soviet leader will brief his Warsaw Pact allies. Just minutes after Mr. Gorbachev's plane took off, three hours ago, 
President Reagan spoke to the American people. He told them the two leaders were closer to cutting long-range nuclear weapons. He and I made real progress toward our goal, first agreed to at Geneva, to achieve deep 50% cuts in our arsenals of those powerful weapons. We agreed that we should build on our efforts to achieve agreement on a START treaty at the earliest possible date. As I told the British Parliament in 1982, we seek to rid the world of the two great nightmares of the post-war era, the threat of nuclear war and the threat of totalitarianism. Earlier, the two men said goodbye with promises to meet again in Moscow next year. For analysis of the closing events and speeches of that much acclaimed summit, we go now to the special edition of ITN's World News, which was broadcast to Europe last night, just before Mr. Gorbachev left America. The programme is introduced, as usual, by John Suchet. surprises everybody with a walkabout in Washington. Both leaders say the summit has been a success. The defense leaders try on some different hats. Pressure from inside Russia to leave Afghanistan. Hello, I'm John Suchet in London with the World News from ITN. The superpower summit in Washington has ended with President Reagan describing it as a clear success. Mr. Reagan said the summit had lit the sky with hope for all people.